Hi friends, welcome to my hands-on cloud demo. Today's video was motivated by a request from some of you who are DevOps aligned to present a central security VPC deployment using Terraform. I would also encourage you to watch my previous video on AWS Gateway Load Balancer East-West inspection with FortiGate Firewall to see the actual inspection in action. Terraform is an infrastructure automation tool. This session will make you understand the benefit of ISC if you compare my previous manual console deployment with this automated deployment. With your continued support, I feel the honor and responsibility to share as we help each other in these first tech years. Although in my previous demo, I used FortiGate Firewall to illustrate the concept, it's not the only appliance that you can use for this type of deployment, but any other third-party firewall appliance which support GNV protocol. In this demo, I'll provision a Linux instance to act as these three firewalls. I'm also carrying out some tests to set up Geneva protocol on EC2 instance running Linux. If I come right with that, then I can even think of integrating IP tables, Squid, or other open source inspection software with the gateway load balancer. In this scenario, you have got VPCs which need to intercommunicate. Because they're going to communicate via the transit gateway, in their routing table, you're going to find that Terraform is going to deploy a default route pointing to the transit gateway. In the security VPC, you will see that the transit gateway subnets, we have routes, a default route pointing to the endpoint. That way traffic is pushed to the gateway load balancer, which in turn sends traffic to the inspecting devices. I did explain this concept in my previous video and also showed a demo whilst using an actual firewall. You can revisit that. Today's session is focused on deploying this infrastructure with the Terraform to benefit from the speed as well as version control. Such kind of a deployment suits well with change control. That being said, let's jump into business. If you check in my AWS console, I just have a single VPC. By the end of the deployment, I expect to be having three additional VPCs. This one is just for illustration. I'm saying you can have more than three or any number of VPCs. In this case, I'm going to have VPC one, VPC two, and a security VPC. I'm going to have a transit gateway, gateway load balancer, endpoints are going to be deployed, and an EC2 instance is going to represent a firewall. Once the deployment is done, the gateway load balancer should show green on the health status because the health check is being done via port 22. Geneva protocol is not actually running on this instance. However, I've got plans and carrying out tests on Linux OS to work with Geneva. There is some documentation, but it's not quite clear. Once I come right with that, then I'll be able to use even IP tables, Squid, or any inspection software which is open source with the gateway load balancer. If you again, if you want to send traffic to the internet, you might also decide to put default routes to a NAT gateway. But in my case, I'm going to say all default traffic go to the transit gateway because I'm focusing on traffic between VPCs on in this case. I'm not going to be installing Terraform on my local machine. However, I'm going to use Cloud9, which you can also use if you're following along. So I'll go to Cloud9 here, create my environment. You can name it anyhow, dev tests. Cloud9 will provision an EC2 instance behind the scene. I'm going to choose Ubuntu server. You can choose any, I just prefer Ubuntu. Then go create environment. Whilst this is happening, we can go back to my AWS console. As we have said, I've just have one VPC. Before I start my deployment, if we check under EC2, we open a new tab here. I don't have any load balancers. I don't have any target groups. Back to VPC again. Endpoints, I don't have any point, I don't have any endpoint, no endpoint service. This is all going to be done via Terraform. Root tables, I just have these three which I was using for something else. Subnets, I just have four subnets. You take note of that after the de deployment, things are going to change. Right, let's check our environment. Okay, I will close this window. I've got my configurations that I did. 
and store on a public repo, which we are also free to open. Let me check my repo here. Right, I'll go. These are the files that are going to be using for our Terraform. So let's go back to the repo. You can equally clone this repo. I'll share the link. HTTPS, copy this part under HTTPS. Then go git clone. The other advantage of using Cloud9, it means you are not going to install Terraform that is pre-installed for you. Even Docker, it comes pre-installed with a number of uh, DevOps tools, let's say Docker PS. You can see there's Docker running here. Uh, let's go Terraform, should be minus minus version. Let's see, minus version. You can see Terraform is already installed in the version 1.17. Okay, let's check our cloned repo. I'll go into training. Let's see what's in training. Then I'll go into the gateway load balancer demo. Right, if you go Terraform plan, before you do that, you can see my files are sitting here. I've tried to organize these files in a way that you can go through them, understand what they do. If you've got any query or clarification that you might require, you are free to contact me. You can also con connect with me via LinkedIn. Just say, search for my first name and surname, which is the same as my channel name. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. If you check these files, this one is basically creating the VPC. I don't have to claim how to do this. If you are starting, you can use documentation all the time. There's a lot of documentation and quite clear documentation, official documentation on the Terraform site, official site. For example, you can see this is how you create a VPC, just for the benefit of those who might not have used Terraform. If you check, this is how you create a subnet. This is subnet, let me see. No, I went to the, but you see the, the number of things that yeah, I wanted to show you, like this is how you create a subnet. You can try out these things, subnet, subnet. I don't know what is happening. It's not going exactly what time. Okay. Maybe it's me who's just clicking too fast here. This is how you create a subnet. So these are the same concept that I did when I was building this code. You can also follow along. You can copy it. You can modify it. Okay. Let's go for it. Right. So if you go Terraform, plan you see that you get an error terraform plan it will need you to initialize the, the files that you have pulled from the repo so you go terraform in it right that is done now you can do your terraform plan to actually see what will happen if you start to provision your resources? The plan is just a simulation of what will happen. It tells you I'm going to provision 35 resources. You can go through them one by one and see what is going to happen. If you are not happy with something, you don't proceed until you fix it. So it's a, it's a, it's a couple of resources being provisioned. Just imagine doing this manually. It will take time, but because we are using Terraform, I'm going to go Terraform Apply. Apply does a plan as well and asks you before you proceed if you are happy. If I'm happy, I'll just go yes. The moment I do this, press this key. Let me go to the VPCs. Now you, you can see I had one VPC already. I've got one, two, three more. My security VPC and the two VPCs that are going to intercommunicate via the security VPC. Let's watch the window. I can also, just to keep entertained what this is happening, see what else is happening here. This is not yet there, no endpoint saves yet. If we go to EC2, let's see if there's anything that we can find here. The gateway load balancer is 
there not a get group yet and if we what else can I check here maybe you can check the subnets let's go back to subnets you see now I've got many more subnets that time I just a couple about four of them endpoint service is there let's see if the endpoint is coming also so the endpoint is deployed from the endpoint service that will take a while also if we go to our code we see things are still happening you see there's a endpoint stuff still happening here transit gateway attachments let's, let's see the transit gateway stuff and a vpc also transit gateway okay this one uh, i deleted it I, I was doing a different lab so this is the new transit gateway attachments coming in these are from a previous demo transit gateway route tables are there okay let's see how far it's going some routing happening here transit gateway route tables so it tells what is happening step by step you can go through it if there are errors it will show you up after the end of the apply this one thing that I want you to take note of for your transit gateway it needs to be in, in appliance mode what appliance mode means is that if you don't configure this mode your transit gateway might receive traffic in from AZA and in turn send a response via AZB and that is not good for firewalls it can cause that's we call it asymmetrical routing firewalls can drop that kind of traffic so if you are doing this central vpc inspection you need to make sure your transit gateway is in appliance mode and on the code let me show you where that is done if i go to the transit gateway i try to arrange my files in such a way that once you clone it you can make sense whatever each of these files is doing so if i go transit gateway here transit gateway tf okay i'm making this demo transit gateway route table association disable propagation disable because i don't want to dis to enable association and propagation uh, automatically because that way it means the vpcs will end up talking to each other directly not via not via the central uh, security vpc i just want to check i just want to check it looks like i might not have edit the appliance mode however that you can also do and that will be on the documentation let's see if we go transit gateway transit gateway transit gateway i'll look for the resource transit gateway so in your terraform life you've got to stick to documentation because you will not be able to know everything off head let's see so this is how you create your transit gateway i'm going to check here the options there must be something which says appliance mode okay this happens on the actual attachment not on the transit gateway so I did configure this I wasn't quite sure now okay let's check the attachment transit gateway attachments let me see if I have got that okay here we go there must be appliance mode somewhere appliance mode unless i just forgot but however that can still be added at any moment i'm not going to edit right now i have to proceed but this is how you do it you just go transit gateway then choose the option because by default it's disabled in the attachment code okay let's proceed right our resources have been provisioned and if we go back here we should be able to see that our okay our gateway load balancer is there our listeners and then the listener to the gateway load balancer is showing health it's showing health because not that is listening on port 6081 because our ec2 instance is not configured for geneva it's something that i'm still researching on uh, and your health check is not done by the geneva a protocol anyway in any in any device that you configure with the gateway load balancer your health check can either go to a 
TCP port. In most files, you find that they will be listening on port 22 or HTTPS. So you can use HTTP. Uh, you can use TCP, but you cannot use UDP for health check. That's why you see this is looking healthy. It's because the EC2 instance listen on port 22. And if I check on the gateway load balancer itself on the configuration, this is the gateway load balancer. And then the target group. See the and then the target group and the listener. So you will be able to go through these files. You can see my health check here is port 22 because I'm using an EC2 instance which listens on port 22. Right. Also take note that if you install these uh, resources, you are going to incur charges. Uh, you can look at the AWS pricing before you do the lab and uh, make sure you are happy with the pricing. Once you provision this and you are done, once you are done, then you need to destroy your resources to make sure you don't incur costs. So I've got my instances running. Okay, this is the firewall. The firewall. I'm calling it a dummy firewall. It was just an EC2 instance. This is my cloud nine. Let me destroy my infrastructure. And it's easy as running Terraform. Destroy. I agree to that. Tet five resources are going to go. It's also an advantage when you are using Terraform. You won't leave out resources running in your environment because everything that you provision, you destroy in one command. There are no chances for errors leaving out some stuff running. Then you have got a shocker bill. If we check here, we should be able to see this guy is going. Let's say who goes first. Okay, things are still happening. Let's see if the pieces, they are still there. I will give it time. We have to wait for this process to finish. The dummy fire is gone. Just keeping myself in the tent. VPCs are gone. Let's check our gateway load balancer. Gateway load balancer gone. Target group gone. She go back. Some transit gateway stuff is still being destroyed. Which means if I go to transit gateway. Oh, no, it's not this part of this thing. So it's transit gateway. It's still deleting. The attachments, they've been deleted. No more transit gateway route tables. The transit gateway itself is still deleting. Once we complete deleting the infrastructure, we've got to terminate our Cloud9 environment as well. Okay, it shows us everything is gone, which means now if I come here, everything is gone. I no longer have those resources anymore, all the subnets gone, except the ones which are there before the lab. Now, the next step will be to terminate your Cloud9 environment. If ever you're doing any work, you can keep your stuff in Git instead of leaving your development environment running, especially for testing. So let's go to our development. I'll close this. I need dead more. Right. Okay, let's go. Okay, I don't know. Let's see. Cloud9. Then come here. Approve the delete. Make sure you do that as well. Right, that's cleaning up your environment. Right, I hope you find this information useful. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.